Soil is the outermost unconsolidated superficial layer of the Earth's crust subjected to physical and chemical changes and which contains both biotic and abiotic components in different proportions. It is usually differentiated into horizons of minerals and organic constituents of variable depths. In brief, soil can be defined as that region on the Earth's surface where geology and biology meet. Pedology is the study of soil. Soil moisture is the amount of water present in soil. It depends upon relative humidity of the atmospheric and soil air, humus content, chemical composition, and texture of the soil. The major source of soil moisture is rain. There are four types of water present in soil, gravitational water, capillary water, hygroscopic water, and combined water. Soil moisture, especially capillary water, plays a vital role in its ability to properly sustain plant growth in it. Too much or too less of moisture is almost always detrimental to both plant and animal life in soil. Productivity and fertility of soil is therefore highly dependent on the presence of soil moisture of the right amount. In this experiment, we'll demonstrate in detail the crucible method for the determination of soil moisture content of three different samples of soil collected from three different locations. I'll also briefly discuss the hot air oven method at the end of this video. For this experiment, we'll need the following. Three soil samples taken from different locations. Remove the larger pieces of stones and plant debris from the samples for accurate results. Bunsen burner or spirit lamp or a hot plate. A pair of tongs. Tripod stand with wire gauge three porcelain dishes or crucibles, weighing scale accurate to at least one gram. You can also use a pocket digital scale, three spatulas or spoons, desiccator containing a suitable desiccant. To begin the experiment, take the dry china dish or crucible and heat it for three to five minutes using a burner, a spirit lamp or a hot plate. This is in order to remove all traces of moisture from the dish. Remove the dish from the heat source and allow it to cool to room temperature, preferably inside a desiccator chamber, and then record the weight of the empty dry dish. Now add 2 to 3 tablespoons full or 5 to 6 spatulas full of the first soil sample to it. Record the gross weight of the container plus the soil sample. Now place the dish on the tripod stand and heat it for about 1 hour or so. You can also use a hot plate for heating. At the end of about an hour, remove the dish from the burner and allow it to cool to room temperature, preferably inside a desiccator chamber. Weigh the dish again and record the weight. This gives you the gross weight of the dish plus the dry soil. Repeat the same process with the remaining two samples of soil. Tabulate the initial weights, final weights, and the difference between initial and final weights of all the three samples of soil as shown in this table. The difference between the initial and final weights for each sample of soil will give the soil moisture content in grams for that sample. To determine the soil moisture content in terms of percentage of dry weight, the formula shown below this table here may be used for each soil sample. This method is basically the same as the previously discussed method, the only difference being that in this method a hot air oven is used instead of a burner for drying the soil samples. Here, the weight of a perfectly dry china dish or crucible or a petri dish is recorded as before. It is then filled with 2 to 3 tablespoons of the soil sample. The combined weight of the dish and the sample is recorded. The dish containing the sample is then placed inside the oven. The temperature of the oven is then set at 110 degrees Celsius and the soil sample is allowed to dry for about 24 hours. At the end of this time period, 
The dish is removed from the oven using a pair of tongs and allowed to cool to room temperature for a few hours inside a desiccator chamber containing a suitable desiccant such as silica gel or fused calcium chloride. The dish containing the dried and cooled soil sample is then removed from the desiccator and the final weight of the soil recorded after making deductions of the weight of the empty dish. Subsequent calculations for determining the soil moisture content are the same as the previously discussed crucible method. So this is all about the experimental aspects of soil moisture determination. Make sure to watch my other soil and water experiment videos by clicking on the end screen card shown on the screen right now or the various links given in the description below. Thanks for watching.